Calvin Leverance, Corey Sparks here, joined with men's basketball player, senior JT Petrie. Big game yesterday, winning the WEAC championship tournament. Just what are your what are your feelings about that, JT, just coming away from that? Yeah, uh, you know, being a team three times, like Platteville, as good as they are too, that was like a top six matchup. So defending our home court was a very nice feeling and getting to cut down the nets was, was awesome in front of the home crowd. Yeah, absolutely. That was... Crazy, like you said, three times. What what did it take to do it three times? Because you've you've seen their game plan twice. What did it take to get it done this time? Yeah, you know, just each each game you pick up more tendencies to to scout and just try to take those away as much as possible. And end of the day, it just comes down to you executing your stuff and just making winning plays and making it happen. Did your stuff? Did your strategy change at all, or is it like? going into it they have to beat you or are you changing your strategy up every game uh no we'll just we'll just pick like one or two things that we really emphasize based on what we saw last time against the team and like in this case uh culture is big on ball pressure in them when, whenever they had the ball try to make them a little uncomfortable so that's something we really uh emphasized did you feel like you were very successful in that or yeah yeah it definitely came in moments when it could have been better as coach was saying during timeouts but Overall, I think we did a good job of taking away rhythm and ball pressure in them. Uh, how much of a priority was Quinton Shields like coming into the game? You guys know what he's done against the rest of the conference. Yeah. The first two matchups, he didn't make too much noise against you guys, but especially in that second half, he really picked up. So how much was he on the radar coming into this one? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he, we got a big scout on him. He's been doing his thing in this league for a while. Uh, everybody knows he's a good player, so... We were trying not to let him get comfortable like that, let him get going, because he, he really took over for them at the end there. But uh, thankfully, he missed that last one for us. <laughs> but, so tell me about tell me about Kyle Tuma, too. Obviously, you guys playing together in high school, yeah. Sheboygan Falls, Valders, and then you come now. He puts up a big game, too. How big of a performance did he have, and like how big of an impact does he have for that team in, in that game? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Kyle's a great guy. We've obviously, as you said, been, we've been playing for a while, so nice to see him last night. We said what's up. But, I mean, same thing with Kyle. He's been in the league. I think he's been starting since he's a freshman. He's just, everybody knows Kyle Tuma. He's a big emphasis. He can light it up, too. Great from the free throw line. But, uh, ultimately, we like we just try to stick Eric on him, try to minimize him as much as possible. But good players, sometimes they're tough to defend like that, and they'll get going. Hey, you mentioned Eric Peterson. That felt like probably one of the games of his life yeah. there last night. And that, we haven't seen him really take over games quite yeah. like he did last night. Did did he have any thoughts beforehand like it? Oh, I feel good tonight, or do you think that's just oh no? I mean, yeah, he just he's been putting a lot of work in like outside of practice to get that shot feeling right. Work like hit some free throws, and he's very he just has good instincts with cutting. And I like a couple he had a couple back backdoor cuts for easy layups, so. I, I mean, he's just one of the hardest workers we got, and I'm glad that he was able to shine like that. So I want to get into some of your thoughts. So we we get down to the the end of this game. Jonah Reinfleisch and Levi Borchardt both get followed out. What are what are the thoughts running through your head like in a moment like this? I don't think you guys have been in a moment where you had to be without your two bigs. What are the thoughts running through your head as we get down late in the game and they're yeah. not here anymore? Yeah, I mean. So first, Jonah, I mean, he's been playing really some of his best basketball the past few games. So he had a big impact on that game. So it was tough to see him fall out. You know, you feel bad for him. He's playing one of his best games, his biggest crowd, biggest game of his life, honestly, so far. So that was tough. And then, I mean, Levi Borchard, probably first team All-American. Obviously, you don't want to lose that. I don't know that he's ever been fouled out like that before. But uh, guys stepped up big, like Cole Booth, Quinn Steckbauer, like, we, we have a lot of guards that can come in and guard positions that are even bigger than them, like three or four. And we really just, everybody had to step up and fill in, and ultimately we got it done. Did you feel like both sides were kind of targeting each other's bigs? I know Pearson fouled out, Tuma got up to four, and then obviously Borchert and Rimfleisch kind of got up to four fouls at one point. Did you yeah. feel like both sides were making it a priority? Let's drive in the paint and try and get them out of the game. Yeah, you could, you could definitely tell. And, I mean, as soon as somebody picks up two, you're, you're thinking, we got to attack this guy. He doesn't want to get a third. And you, you could tell both sides were sort of using that strategy, like, hey, we might be able to go at this guy. He doesn't want to pick up a foul and have to sit. And you could tell both both sides were using that strategy a little bit. I'm 
Platfield, they just they just kept clawing their way back into the game. And not saying you guys ever had a comfortable lead, but you guys were leading by a good 10, 11, a lot of the second half for sure. They just kept clawing. What are the timeouts like when it gets down, when they got down to one or when they keep getting closer? What are the timeouts like with Coach Lewis? What are the thoughts running through your head? Just what are the conversations being had in those timeouts? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, so to start, we got a couple seconds, just the, just the players, and we're just trying to, Talk about what we're noticing out on the court, more specifically, like what we could do to get some good looks on offense, what we need to do defensively. And then coach will just come in, reemphasize those things. And uh, last, I remember last night, a big thing was, with him was like just making sure we all knew we were good enough to do to do this. He kept saying, like, look, in, look me in the eyes, like, we're good enough to do this. We're going to get this done. So just that confidence that he was pushing in all of us definitely helped for sure. Now, how, does it, how does it make you feel as a – as a player, just getting that confidence from your coach, whether it be in a timeout at practice, like when he's telling you that, what, how does that make you feel as a player? Yeah, uh, it's definitely freeing. Uh, you just, you're able to play so much more loose. You know, he's got confidence in you, so you can have confidence in yourself. And I think it just leads to overall more success, playing confidently like that. So we take a look at the, the crowd last night. What was it, 1,300? Yeah, 1,300. Or... I heard it was like the most I've ever had there in I think seven years or something like that, so. The biggest crowd I've ever seen, and is is it the biggest crowd you've ever seen there? Or? Yeah, I would say that crowd was probably right up there with, I remember the Sweet 16 game my freshman year. I, I would say those two crowds were both very similar. What what role did the crowd have to play yesterday in that game? Yeah, it was huge. I mean, it's great when we get students. Uh, we, we have a lot of other athletics that support us a lot, so it's always nice seeing them at the games. And having their encouragement and just other students just stepping up like we saw them right on under the baseline right by our bench uh those guys are awesome and just yeah i mean you go on a little run the crowd gets into it it feels like you're even on a bigger run and i know even plat village they travel really good and when they got it down from like 10 to like two there they were all standing on their feet even just how well they traveled to encourage their team to get a stop so i mean it's fun to be in a game like that back so back and forth with the crowds like that yeah it was super electric I, I got the feeling that like watching the game how how does a team come in and win like playing on the road how do you come in and win at an in an atmosphere like that have you ever gone on the road and had that like how do we win in this building with there's yeah. so many people yeah i mean definitely there's some some crowds in the way act where it's it's pretty hostile to play at and you just gotta try to reduce the the airs like turnovers and stuff like that the fouls you just gotta really be on your game and try to block out the noise and just focus on yourself. And I kind of speaking of other teams in the WEAC, I mean, you guys are in a really competitive conference. You know, lacrosse has been in the top 10 throughout the entire year, pretty much. Platteville had some injuries. They were top six coming in. Um, how much do you think that prepares you for, you know, what's ahead? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's almost every game feels like a playoff game in our conference. You can't take a night off. Like, I mean, as you guys know, like, we didn't play our best basketball against Whitewater or, or Eau Claire this year, and it costed us a game. There's no team you can just walk by. But, I mean, I think a game like last night definitely gets you ready for the national tournament. Just executing late game, getting fouled, not turning it at all, or stuff like that. De defending really good players like that, because that's what you'll see in the national tournament. So it was great to have that kind of exposure last night. Yeah, so I feel like even if you didn't win that game, you're still a high seed in the tournament either way. But, like, does you getting that win, you've you've had confidence all season, but does that change your mentality just even more, just more confidence? Or what is your, what's your mentality going in, just knowing that you got the win in your conference tournament? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely helps not entering the, the national tournament on coming off a loss. So being able to, to close the deal last night was huge. And Coach Lewis actually pointed out, this is the first time at Oshkosh where we've won the regular season and the conference championship. So, I mean, as soon as he told all that, we were all fired up. And I think that's going to give us a lot of confidence to to defend our home court here in the national tournament, too. Yeah, so we just look at we look at 2019. You guys yeah. lost in the semifinal, I believe, in the conference tournament. What Did that affect your mindset going into the uh, tournament? I mean, you guys clearly came away as champions. But, like, did that set you down a level at all? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, this year, Coach made a point to reemphasize that, like, it was the same scenario. It was a Thursday night, the semifinal on our home court, and fresh my freshman year, Stevens Point came in and they 
they throttled us. I mean, one by like 20. So we just knew we had to show up Thursday. We couldn't look look past Thursday and focus on Saturday. We had to make sure we got it done one game at a time. So I mean, that was definitely that mindset of of not looking too far ahead was very important. And so obviously, we're on, since we're on the topic of 2019, we might as well talk about that. The team you have now, how does how does that compare to what you had then? Is it is it similar, completely different, or what? What? How do you think about the comparison of the teams? Yeah, I would say uh, like a similarity is I mean a lot of a lot of star power. So I mean obviously 2019, you think of Ben, Brett, Adam, and Jack. I mean they were all just studs. And then I mean I would say I would put Eddie, Hunter, Levi right there with them. I, it, they come in different forms, but I would say like. They all just have the similar impact to games to just take over, be clutched down the stretch. And I would say one one difference this year is uh, I think we have a ton of depth on our team this year. Like, if you just go to watch one of our practices, the scout team, some days, like, our starters have, have a hard time guarding them. They'll, they'll just – they'll beat us in whatever drill we're doing when they're uh, trying to scout as, like, say, Platteville. Like, they gave us a great look. So, I mean, it's just – I think a lot of depth – depth and that really helps push us in practice that way when it comes time for the game we're ready to to compete so you think that the depth of your team the rest of your players you think that they're improving a ton like as we look forward in years two that they're going to be ready for more runs like this not just this year too with the yeah. competition that they bring in practice yeah i would say i mean we, we just have like the culture built here and everybody knows their role and i mean everybody Coach does a lot. Everybody is important. Everybody's valued. And, I mean, those guys play a huge role in our success on game days. And, yeah, I, I have a lot of confidence in the future. And, I mean, not like too far ahead, but I know we have a great incoming recruiting class next year. With I think we're up to six commits already, a lot of good good local players. So I think there should be a lot of success at Oshkosh for the near future too. That's awesome. So still on 2019, you were through that entire run. What What was the experience like? just overall first, like, just getting to experience that entire thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's crazy. Uh, high school basketball, I mean, we won. We were pretty good, but we never made, like, a state run or anything. And then, so my freshman year, I walk into that. We're just, we run we run the table, win the whole thing. We're just expected to win every game. We went on, like, a 14-game win streak. I mean, just all that was so, so incredible to be a part of. And I mean, the national tournament experience was amazing. Getting the host that second weekend was awesome. The Final Four in Fort Wayne, I'll never forget just everything about that. They do a great job of making that special for the players. So, I mean, yeah, I'm just so lucky to be able to walk into that and now keep the success success going, too. is awesome. So are there some players looking up to you, like some younger guys who weren't there? Is it just you and Eric uh, that were there? Yeah, and then uh, our assistant, Tommy Borda, who trans who trans heard from a player to a coach this this past year but yeah right. just so um like kind of building off that are guys looking at you guys then are they asking as we kind of get into the ncaa tournament now you've been through this you know what's the mentality i should approach with what if i get nerves in some of the biggest games of my lives how much of a guidance figure are you guys kind of taking yeah i would say i'd say the young guys look up to that a lot and i mean throughout the year there'd always be questions about it and even guys that haven't been there, like like Levi or Eddie that Hunter, they they've still played in huge games themselves too. So even they can give like some guidance and what what's expected and how we have to take care of business to to get to that goal. But is is in that championship run, you won every game, obviously, but like is there still ups and downs? Like is there still downs that you go through? Like is your mentality like all over the place? Or are you guys just riding high that entire Yeah. Right I would now? say I would say at that point, you're you're pretty much you're set on what you're doing. It's just about executing. So the only downs there really are at that time would be, I mean, just mid game, going on, giving up like a little run, just trying to like like avoid that and minimize that and get back to playing your kind of basketball. So looking at this year, then is it is it true that you guys have a chance to host two weekends? Is that true? Yeah, I, I know Coach tells, tells us not to look too far ahead, but but yeah, I mean, as long as we take care of business this upcoming week, yeah, we'll be able to host the second weekend as well. All right, so yeah, let's stick let's stick with the first week here. Then what yeah. what what does it mean to to you, the community, the team, just being able to have the chance to play at home all the way through the championship, but like this week, what does it mean to everyone? Yeah. 
Oh, it's it's super exciting getting to know. Like end of this week, we're gonna be able to just spend time in our own locker room, like put on the white uniforms, play in front of all our families who are able to come because it's not like we have to go eight hours away. So it's just real nice. And then obviously we all have friends here, so they are all supporting us, getting us excited, telling us they'll be at the game. So that's just all throughout the whole week. That's just able to build you up and get you excited to compete Friday. So how do you how do you feel about your chances to make a, a long run this year? We don't let's not look too far ahead, but like yeah. just going into it, how do you guys feel? Are you set up well? We talked about death. Just yeah. how do you feel? Yeah, I think I think a lot of us have confidence in that, and I I mean going back to all the work people put in in the summer, you knew the the end goal was to get back to Fort Wayne, get to the Final Four. So I mean we all have confidence in that. We're starting to play really well too, playing well together. We're getting people healthy, so. I mean, we definitely have high expectations. So you talked about you talked about the goal there. Was is this? Are you exactly where you wanted to be? Have you exceeded anything? Have you fallen short of anything? Or where were those? Where were all those goals put at the yeah. beginning of the season? Yeah, I would say uh, it would have been nice not to to drop those two conference games and an undefeated regular season would have been very special. But I mean, ultimately, the first two goals are to win the regular season and then win the conference tournament, and we're two for two so far. So. Couldn't really ask for much more, especially out of a senior year, for sure. So yeah, senior senior year, like you're you're done, you're done after this. What is it? What is it meant for you to be a, a Titan here at Oshkosh throughout all your years? Yeah, I mean it's been incredible. So many memories that I couldn't ever like ask for, and I will always remember like basketball and just outside of basketball. I think Oshkosh and like the school has just done a lot for in terms of my development as a person and a student. And just so many great relationships with people, both in sports and just outside of sports, in classes and stuff like that. It's been awesome. So sticking to basketball for, for this question, how much do you feel like you've improved over your years just as a basketball player all around here at Oshkosh? Yeah, I think I think a lot. I, I know that my freshman year, I, it was mainly just about player development and like we had an assistant coach who's now, he's the head assistant at Michigan Tech, Ben Stelzer. Me and him spent so much time together just trying to tweak my shot and just like make me a better basketball player all around. And like, I'm so thankful he would always be down to work out with me. And he really helped push me to be a better player. And I think that first year, I, I really felt myself with improving coming out of high school. And then you just, through all the off season, working with the guys and stuff, you build yourself up that way too. You got any got any plans for any basketball thing after school or not even looking looking at that or yeah I mean no I, I don't know if I'll coach or not I've been asked asked this a couple times by some people but we'll see what happens I, I wouldn't shut anything down but yeah I'd sort of just just focus on finishing this year strong good good mentality so <laughs> uh, so this is gonna be your last run here at Oshkosh every every game could be your last. How much are you just going to cherish these moments with, with the guys? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I woke up this morning and I was talking to one of my roommates and I had that that same thought. I was like, any one of these games could be the last one. So I guess that's a little scary, but I'm just going to – each practice, each day, I'm just going to enjoy being around the guys and because that's what I'll miss most. The, the games will be awesome practices, but I'll, I'll just miss hanging out with the guys, the relationships. So just going to really try to take all that in. How have the relationships been? Have they been super tight with all these guys? Is this a is this a good tight knit group of fellas? Yeah. yeah, I would say I mean, even more than like my freshman year or any any team I've been a part of. I mean, it helps eight of us on the team live together in the house. So and I mean just that COVID year, you, you couldn't really associate with, with people outside of the team because you didn't want to risk some uh, like having to go on shutdown, not being able to work out. So that year we just spent so much time just to us and it was really really great just to get to know everybody on a deeper level and just spend so much time together how big of a role do you think that that plays in basketball obviously getting to know them personally just how much does that translate on the court yeah i i think it's huge i mean you just get to know so much about the person you know in basketball you know what they like ways to give them advantages and i think a, a big part of that being so close is you're not afraid to give them some criticism because they'll know it comes from the right place. So if you're noticing something, you're not scared to speak up and just, just let them know.
Does that does that happen a lot? Criticism? Do, do you give that a lot or? Uh, no, I would just say like, I mean, if somebody somebody's doing like forcing a little too much, you'll, you'll just be like, hey, we got to move the ball. And I mean, I think some places you might not do that because you then you just create like an inner feud. But we'll just we'll just say like, hey, we need we need to move the ball, get better looks, stuff like that. Nothing too personal. Nobody takes it the wrong way. So since any moment could be your last, you've also you've already had some lasts in the regular season and now the WEAC tournament. What what were those moments like? Just like realizing that those were your last. Was there any emotions like deep emotions yeah. in that at all? Yeah, I would say it first felt real senior night because I mean, I, you spend all these years playing and you see the older guys do that. And you don't really think that's going to be you anytime soon. But, you know, walking through the huddle of the players, getting the board from coach and walking out to midcourt and just seeing everybody in the stands, it's just like, that's when it really hits you. Like, wow, this is coming to an end and just makes you want to cherish the rest of it. I see. Well, we we have had a lot of fun watching you and thank you for your time here. We look we really look forward to seeing what you guys are going to put out on the court. Hopefully it's going to be a lot of wins. So thank you for yeah. being here, JT. Yeah, thanks for having us. We appreciate everything you guys do for us.